Hello everyone and welcome to Learn English with Diala. Today we're going to listen to the story Project Mulberry by Linda Sue Park. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe to this channel, hit the like button and share it to your social media platforms. Project Mulberry by Linda Sue Park Julia Song and her friend Patrick want to win first prize at the state fair. Julia's mother suggests raising silkworms, something she did when she was a young girl in Korea. Julia is not happy about the idea at first. It seems too Korean and she wants to do an American project. I opened the cardboard window one last time, took out the same caterpillar and put it into a little glass jar. We poked air holes in the metal lid. We kept the jar in the aquarium alongside the egg cartons and I put a cup upside down over it so it would be dark most of the time. But whenever Patrick wanted to film, we took the jar out for a few minutes. It was so cool. My parents came out to see and Patrick's parents brought a hot beneki out that evening to have a look. The porch was very crowded. I worried that all those people would upset the caterpillar, but it didn't seem to care. Not even when both the twins started jumping up and down and screeching with excitement. The caterpillar moved its head constantly, sometimes fast, sometimes a little slower, but never stopping. It looked like really hard work. The silk came out of its mouth, just as Patrick had said. At first, the silk was almost invisible. You could see the strands only if you looked really hard. By the next morning, though, the caterpillar had already wrapped itself in a layer of silk. It looked like it was living inside a cloud. We could see its black mouth moving, moving, moving. Busy, busy, busy. Patrick wanted to stay up all night to film it, but both our moms vetoed that idea. The following morning, he was at our house in his pajamas again. The silk was almost solid. Now we could barely see the black mouth moving inside. I was glad Patrick was taping it. I'd be able to watch it again as many times as I wanted. But I knew it would never be as special on tape as it was now, happening right in front of me. Those wispy threads at first barely, mo barely more than air, and then like a cloud, the caterpillar spinning layer after layer after layer, each layer made of 100% real silk thread. I stood with a piece of paper held behind my back. I am a genius, I said to Patrick. It was the afternoon of the third day of the spinning, a Sunday. Patrick was sitting on the couch in our living room. I told him to sit there while I went and got a paper from my room. He raised his eyebrows at me, but didn't say anything. I've decided what I'm going to embroider. I'm going to do... I paused dramatically, then whipped out the paper. The life cycle of the silkworm. I held up the sketch I'd drawn. Egg, worm, cocoon, moth. I point, pointed to the drawings one by one. And wait till you hear the best part. I'm going to use regular embroidery floss to do the egg and the worm. And the moth too. But for the cocoon, I'm going to use the thread we make. The cocoon is made of silk in real life. And it will be made of silk in the picture too. Get it? Patrick grinned. A really huge grin. He got it. All right. I almost felt like hugging him. He put his hands up in the air, 
and bent forward a few times like he is who was bowing to me. Julia Sung, you are a genius. We are absolutely positively going to win the prize at the fair. I made a silly curtsy back at him. Thank you, thank you. I thought of doing the life cycle a while back, but it was the caterpillar that had given me the idea for the cocoon part. I'd watched it spin for a while right before I went to bed, and I'd woken up that morning with my genius plan. I had known right away that it was perfect. There was just something so completely right about it. It wasn't American like the flag, but it wasn't Korean either. Or maybe it was both. Patrick took the sketch from me and studied it for a second. Then he looked up. It's almost like an exact picture of the whole project, right? I nodded. That's what I was thinking. Okay, so if it's supposed to be just like the project, you should leave out the moth at the end. Why would I leave out the moth? That's the final stage, right? The final stage of the silkworm life cycle, yeah, but not the final stage of our project. What are you talking about? We're not going to have any moths. Of course we're going to have moths, I said. Look how great they're doing. They're almost done spinning their cocoons. But we want thread, so you can sew with it. Yeah, so what was the pa what was Patrick's problem? Patrick rolled his eyes at me. Oh, I get it. You never read the book, did you? I did so. I mean, I didn't read every word, but I looked through it. I studied the pictures a lot. I traced one of the cut one for the caterpillar sketch. Jules, if you'd read the book, you'd know. Patrick, what are you talking about? He shook his head. If you want to get silk from the cocoons, you have to kill the, the creatures inside before they come out as moths. What? I stared at him. I could feel the blood going out of my face. You have to kill them? Patrick nodded. You have to, to boil the cocoons for about five minutes to dissolve all the sticky stuff that keeps them together. Then you can unwind the silk for the boiling kills them, the pupa. For once, there was no jostling in my head because there was only one thought with nothing else for it to bump into. Kill them? We'd have to kill them? My hands were freezing cold. I closed them into fists, up and shut, up and shut, while I tried to get my braid to work. Patrick, wait. Why can't we unwind the cocoons after the moths come out? Jules, it's all in the book. Okay, okay. I didn't read the stupid book, tell me. I almost screamed. Patrick spoke slowly like he was trying to calm me down. The moth. Gets out by making a hole in the cocoon, right? To make a hole, it has to chew through the silk. Well, it doesn't actually chew. It spits out this chemical that dissolves the silk and makes a hole. And the hole goes through all the layers of silk. See? So instead of one nice long thread, you'd end up with a million tiny short pieces that you wouldn't sew with. Silk farmers never get the moths came out. It would ruin everything, get it? I got it. All right. I closed my eyes because I felt dizzy. I hadn't known that I didn't know. Thank you for watching. See you soon.